And today I realized, and I wrote it down here in my notes, that having my first ever no reserve auction on a car that I deeply cared for and I enjoyed immensely, no shits, I took this thing out to the max, guys. It's awesome. I did everything I possibly could to push this thing to the, to the, to the max in every way that I, I could, I could dream of. Man, I sucked it. I sucked all the fun out of it. I sucked all the fun out of it. And then... I built many startups, most of them have failed. And so Bitcoin is exactly the place that I like to be. We're gonna end it right there. Now doesn't this seem like a true Sunday sermon? Is it not here in the dark? My wife always tells me not to, uh, not to read in the dark. She's right. It's bad for the eyes. But I got lots of fake lighting here, guys. I got a lot of fake lighting here. You know what I, I want to talk about? I finally found it here. Here's my notes. You know what I want to talk about in this Sunday sermon? I want to talk about a no reserve life. A no reserve life. I experienced something. I experienced something absolutely life-changing. It was life-changing and I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to circle around it. <clears throat> I experienced something life-changing. I sold a possession of mine. I sold a possession of mine that I put two years of work into and I was able to create my best image of a car that I absolutely uh, was fond of in my, in my younger years, in my youth, a Formula One car. And I was, able, I was able to create this thing, a recreation of my own hand, my own mind, my own brain, my own thinking, my own thoughts. I was able to recreate this thing with the canvas that I had, right? Not a perfect canvas, but a canvas nonetheless. And so I built it over two years, over two years created some great content, had some, created some great memories, met some amazing people, created some amazing long, lifelong relationships, I hope. If not, it's okay because people move on. But this has been, it's been a great project. And, 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 it's, uh, and so I sold this, this car. I sold this car. And and I decided to, to challenge myself. I decided my, to challenge myself. And I challenged myself by putting this car up for auction with a no reserve, a no reserve auction. Now, if you've ever been in the auction world, having a reserve takes the fun out of the game. Right? Because people aren't stupid, especially when you're selling these high-performance exotic cars. People aren't stupid. They do the math. They understand the market. Some of them know the car market better than your average sports lunatic knows sports. And I'm telling you guys, I know some guys. I know some people who could tell you. You'd say, hey, here's the car I'm looking at. Here's the car I want. It's got... You know, it's this year, it's this many miles, it's da -da -da -da, all the details, and this guy could literally, by memory, be like, that's worth X. And then I'll ask you some questions. Does it have this trim, this trim, or that trim, or, or does it have this option? Does it have this, this bespoke, you know, thing? What, what, what additions have you made or whatever? I mean, he'll ask you the question, but at the end of the day, like, he's spot on, like, with the market. He knows exactly, and there are guys like this, guys. There are guys who know exactly the value of these cars. And so my point is, is that when you put a reserve on an auto auction, when you put a reserve on the auto auction, you lose all the fun. You lose all the fun. 
because people aren't stupid. They'll, they'll say, okay, you're auctioning off an, an X car with Y miles, with Z looks and features. Market says, eh, within a, you know, a couple grand differential, it's going to be about this much. And if the individual's price to sell, the reserve is going to be a little bit lower than that. If this is not something serious and clearly they, by their communication, they reveal that this is their car, their jam, and you're just privileged to be able to purchase it with that type of attitude, then you know they're going to, the reserve is going to be relatively within the, within the average marks of a car of that particular stature within the exotic car world. And so having a reserve just takes all the fun out of it. And so I've never done an auto auction like this before. And so I, I put up a two-year build of passion and heart from an, a childhood memory of a Formula One car, and I transformed this car into something just like it. Two years of work, passion, and it also had many firsts, in my opinion, in the world. Now, I have to qualify with my opinion because ain't nobody showing up with any Guinness Book of World Records here. This is just me being me being me. And one of the grand things about being me is that everything I do is first. <laughs> and you should think that way, too. And so I created this thing, and I put my heart and soul into it, and I sold it, and I sold it at no reserve. I sold it at no reserve. Because I wanted to do things differently. I wanted to experience an experience that I had never experienced before. I wanted to open myself up to massive risk. Okay? I mean, a no reserve auction avails you the opportunity of the excitement of the game. Some of the psychology and mental strategies of bidding and beating the timer. Some individuals use bots to place bids at last second intervals uh, to, to beat someone out. I mean, there are strategies and there are technologies used in these reserve auctions which can make for quite a show. And I've been a lurker in these auction, in the car auction world for years. Um, and so for me, like I understood that. I understood that game. And so it can, you have the opportunity on a no reserve to make an exorbitant amount of money if you have... You have created the appeal necessary for that particular exotic car uh, to appeal to what you would hope is a, demo, a targeted demographic that you know exists and is willing to pay um, above premium for that type of car. But you also run the risk of making far less than what the average or what the market is usually willing or uh, can take on the burden of. Right, And so that's the fun. The fun is the risk-reward. The fun is the opportunity to make lots of money, in the, uh, uh, obviously with any type of gamble, any type of bet. There's the opportunity to lose your ass. And so I wanted to experience this. And one of the, one of the, um, one of the pieces of guidance, one of the pieces of guidance that was given to me by the individuals uh, holding the auction was they said, engage. Engage with the community in the comments because if you engage with the community in the comments, uh, generally, your auction will fare better. And here's the thing. What he didn't realize, what the individual on the other end of that email didn't realize, is that they were talking to me. And you know what? You know what? I was built to engage, especially on the internets. I love it. It's my place. It's my playground. I enjoy it. I'm all about testing waters. I'm all about testing new communities, new groups of people where you have to earn the respect. And so I engaged. I engaged, in my opinion, probably better, far better than anyone had ever experienced on this particular auction site before. Individual replies, contextually sensitive remarks, explanations that made sense, no shortness, a little bit of sassiness, and just a smidge of humor. Though sometimes on the internet, your humor can be seen off as being an asshole, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. And so I engaged and I had a lot of fun doing it. It was great because it, uh, this was part of the ending process. Let's call it the, 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 um, the, the grieving process. That's what I'm talking about. And this is part of the grieving process of giving away a two-year build that I had so much fun in, had so many great experiences, went to so many unique places and met so many different people. And like, like this, is, this is 
now for anyone out there that's not a car person, you know, this might mean nothing to you, but recontextualize it to something that matters to you. For me, it's cars. The personalization of cars and the experiences of where it takes me and the people I meet especially. And so this is part of the grieving process. And I wanted to be fully engaged in the death of this experience, the end of the show, right? The end of the chapter in this particular build's life. And you know what? I have grown into an individual who's willing to share it online to a small select few of individuals within my community. And it doesn't need to be a mass appeal. It only needs to be for those who care and want to listen. And so we did it and I engaged and we had a grand old time and with, from the finale, we even had a, what I believe to be is a world first live stream uh, of the auction in the final 10 minutes of the auction. And you know what? I had lots of fun. I experienced, you know, and, and here's, here's what's really I need to say before I forget is that I experienced a nervousness and butterflies in my heart and gut that I hadn't experienced in years, guys. I am a confident individual with who I am, of how I portray myself online and how I portray myself in the world. I don't give two fucks what the internet says. I just do as I do and I'm glad you guys are here to listen. And I really do respect you guys if you're willing to grind and make your life worth something. But man, I'll tell you guys, <laughs> what an experience. What an experience this was. A no reserve auction. A no reserve auction where I got to experience it fully, had a great finale. And you know what? We ended up selling it. And I had those butterflies that I haven't experienced in years. You know what? Those butterflies brought me alive. They brought me alive. They brought me alive. I, I can, I mean, I was nervous. I don't, guys, I don't get nervous. For those of you guys who've known me from my previous life before this online stuff, right? I sp I've spoken in front of thousands of people and on the international stage. For me, doing something online by my honja, by myself, by my lonesome in my own garage of comfort, selling a, a car? Come on. But here's what my color commentary here belies. What it belies is the fact that my butterflies and my nervousness was due to the gravity of how important this car was to me during two fantastic formulative years of my life. And that, I think, is powerful. I think that's worth understanding. And I think that's worth diving into, which is why I'm talking about it to you today. A no-reserve life. A no-reserve life. You know what a no-reserve life avails you? A no-reserve life avails you the opportunity to experience butterflies and nervousness and new experiences that you never would have experienced before because you got the guards, guardrails off. You're willing to fail. You're willing to eat the cost of that failure. And you're willing to also be prepared to reap the rewards on the other side of it. And for my hopes for you guys, I hope that you win more then you lose. But I'll tell you guys, I open myself up to losing because even in the loss, even in the L, taking the big L to the face, there are feelings and experiences that are worth leaning into. And today I realize, and I wrote it down here in my notes, that having my first ever no reserve auction on a car that I deeply cared for and I enjoyed immensely, no shits, I took this thing out to the max, guys. It's awesome. I did everything I possibly could to push this thing to the, to the, to the max in every way that I, I could, I could dream of. Man, I sucked it. I sucked all the fun out of it. I sucked all the fun out of it. And then it's time to move on. 
And you know what? With the move on, you can move on safely. You know what you can do? You can put it back together. You can make it look clean. And you can sell it at, a, at the market rate. No problem. Or you could give yourself the opportunity to tell the story. To tell the story of why it looks like what it looks like. And why your life, why that means something to you in your life. And for me, as you guys could probably imagine, I appreciate the story of life. I appreciate what you do in life. I appreciate how you apply yourself in life. And I appreciate that you, if you're willing to take the guardrails off, the safety rails off, the, the floaties off, then you will experience life fully. You will. I will tell you, before the auction began, I had butterflies and a nervousness that made me pace. I don't pace, okay? I'm a solid, I'm like, I'm a solid thinker. Like, I sit and think. I sit here and write. I'm very focused. I don't pace, guys. I paced in and out of my garage for like 10 minutes straight. I mean, come on. Is that experience worth it? Hell yeah, it was. Hell yeah, it was. Because once the auction ended and the experience was lived, I could tell you this story. I could tell you this is a story of why it reminded me of having, of why it's so important to have a no reserve life. It's so that I can experience just a little bit more of the spectrum of life, right? I was just talking with a friend that was just sitting down with me uh, here. He just got off work and he hit me up. I must have been given off the right vibration, guys, because this is one of my only friends. And he, he, he hit me up. He's like, hey, man, can I stop by after work? And I was like, bro. Absolutely. And so we talked for two or three hours. It was great. It was awesome. We reminded each other of why having a no reserve life is so important, of why being of, of open to the experience of, of life, good or, bad, you, good or bad, you will fucking survive. You will survive. What? You, you'll survive it. And you'll be able to tell a story. And you'll be able to grow into areas of life and meet, oh man, the best part, I always, this is it, man, because I'm all about communities and relationships. You get, when you have a no reserve life, you get to meet people. You get to meet people out in the world that have different perspectives on life, a different leaning in life, a different worldview in life, a different way of doing things in life, and they will challenge you for good or bad, take it. I hope that if, as you get more mature with age, as I am, I hope that I learn how to take everything with the good and the good only and only allow the bad that I can't control to be meditated on and then moved on from. Have a no reserve life. So how you, it's the only way that you can have a life worth living is having a no reserve life. A life that is full especially with people, especially with experiences. Man, people, experiences, places you could go, things you could do, things you could eat. Let me just be honest, guys. Like, come on, one of the best parts about, like, experiencing the world is you get to eat awesome food. Like, like can I just interject for a second, guys, in this... Go eat, go eat other, go eat other fucking cultural food, please. You have, you don't know what delicious is. You don't know what delicious is, if your if your palate is limited, limited, to something that you just is is good enough. I, I get good enough because I'm 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 all about good enough. Just execute, learn, don't overthink it. Yeah, I get it. Good enough is has, has its place contextually. But guys. Fucking go try different cultural food. The farther you move away from your your native native food choices, the better. Because you haven't experienced what delicious is yet. I promise you. And I've traveled the world, my friends. And I still don't believe that I've truly experienced food heaven. <laughs> you know? And what happens when you experience... Different foods, you invariably clash with other traditions, cultures, 
people, languages, behaviors, nuances, aesthetics, and idiosyncrasies. Good. Good. Have a no reserve life. Start with food. That's a great example of where to go. I experienced life. I experienced life when I did this no reserve auction. It was awesome, guys. And I'm glad that I'm able to tell you about it. I'm glad that I'm be able to I'm I'm cogent enough to be able to communicate it to you guys. It's awesome. And you know what? I got paid regardless of whether it was with market rate or whether it was significantly lower than expected. <laughs> but you know what? No, it wasn't. No, I got I got I got market rate for how I modified this car. Let's just put it that way. It's got my fingernail on it. My fingernail. It's got my fingerprint on it, guys. So you know what? You purchasing the PD style. You purchasing the PD style kind of car, guys. Have a no reserve life. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But you'll experience something. You'll learn something. And it'll be fun. Man, go for those experiences. Meet those people. Do those things. What other life you got to have to do it? This is Peter, the Bitcoin Lambo. If you appreciated this Sunday sermon of sorts, Smash the like button, share it, subscribe, have a great day, be positive, stay the course, you can do it.